Okay, we're going to try to answer a few viewer questions today. First one is, um, is there any good way, or is there any good useful way to learn Bash? Is it better to watch vi watching videos, reading books about Bash scripting, or is it less reading, more practicing? Are there any uh, free ebook uh, PDF formats? Um, and so let me try to answer that. Uh, really, there's no specific way whether reading or watching videos is better. Um, I do both. Uh, one thing is if you're going to read, I, I personally in the past I've tried buying programming books and then they end up just sitting on the shelf because if I need to do something in the programming language I'm more likely to Google it and read it or YouTube it and watch a video on how to do it. Um, I personally usually uh, do the Google thing first and read because I can skip ahead and skim over the page and look directly at the code where a video you're kind of like waiting for them to do stuff. Now saying that I mean I do videos and some people uh, it's better you know to learn by hearing and seeing um, depending, on, depending on how comfortable you are with language already. Um, but the one thing is if you're going to like Google it at, or if you have some sort of PDF or ebook that you're reading about don't copy and paste the code from the examples within the, the document. Uh, type it out. Uh, the only way you're going to learn is by doing. So when it comes to reading or practicing, definitely, I mean, both are important, but practice, practice, practice. When you learn something new, do it as much as you can that week that you learn it. Um, and as always, I've said this in the past, when it comes to programming, um, it's not memorization of everything. I mean, there's going to be some things you do all the time, and obviously you're going to learn how to do those. But uh, it's important to keep good notes. Keep notes in a way that you can easily go through them. Ten, probably a little more than ten years ago, probably about you know 15 years ago, back when I was in high school, still in my Windows days, uh, I did a lot of stuff with Visual Basic and and uh, batch uh, files, and I had a little notepad that I wrote stuff in. Nothing was in an actual order, but I could flip through it and try to find notes that I had uh, taken on doing certain things. So, um, you know. When you learn something, write it down or save it somewhere on the computer that you can easily search. I personally use Google Docs for this. Um, that's something I find Google Docs useful for, you know, as far as keeping regular documents on there. I have no problem using Google Docs, uh, even though it's not really open source. Uh, and, and you can yell at me for that because I, I completely agree. If you're going to give me a hard time about that, yeah, you're right. I probably shouldn't be using Google Docs. Um, but it's an easy way for me to put my computer notes and I'll have documents that title like if I did something in in bash it will say bash dash finding line number in document or something like that and the thing I like about Google Docs is it's very easy to search through and the document itself might be just one or two lines of code but and I have hundreds of them now if you do do that uh, the one big thing about using web-based applications like that is don't become dependent on them. And Google, the one of the great things about Google um, is they do offer Google Takeout, um, and that's for pretty much all their services. You can go to Google Takeout and download all your documents. And I do this every couple of months. I go and I download all my documents from my Google Docs account, uh, now known as Google Drive. And I back them up on my Pogo plug, and every couple of months uh, I back up this new stuff on my Pogo plug to CDs or DVDs and put them inside my safe. So, uh, one, always have multiple backups of everything, and two, if you're going to use a service like Google Docs, don't be dependent on it. Um, at this point, I could take all my documents that I've done over the years and probably put them into my SQL on my own server and then write a simple little web application to search through them because um, formatting isn't really a, a big deal because they're not actual like real word documents like you would use for work. They're just scripts. Um, I've also been putting uh, some more of my fuller scripts on my paste bin, but that's more for sharing with people rather than just quick notes, which is what I use Google Docs for. So definitely just practice and, and keep good notes, whether it's on paper, on your local computer, on a server you have somewhere, which is a great way, once again, because you can access it from anywhere, or if you don't have a, your own server, uh, something like Google Docs. Um, but once again, always keep copies for yourself so if they decide to cancel your account or change their terms and you don't agree with it, you're not locked in. Um, 
Yes, uh, so let's move up to the next question is, how many programming languages do you know and which ones are they? That's a hard question because anyone, once you learn programming and you get really good at any, almost any language, you can look at most other languages and at least understand them, even though you may not be able to write in them because they're just, they're so similar and um, it's kind of like my father can't speak Italian, but he can understand people when they are speaking Italian fairly well, just because he's heard it so much. Um, I may not know, um, I've never done anything in C-sharp, but I'm sure if I looked at C-sharp code, for the most part, I could look through it and figure out what it's doing, you know, the majority of the time. But could I sit down and write C-sharp? No. And it, so, as far as what programming languages I love, what I'm no, what I'm kind of trying to get to is, I've worked with a lot of programming languages, but when I say, which ones do I know? I mean, do I know fluently? Probably very few. I've, I've done stuff in PHP, JavaScript, uh, I've done a little bit in Java, uh, I've done some stuff in C, C++, obviously Bash. Um, years ago, like I said, in my Windows day, I used Visual Basic um, and, and Batch scripts. Um, but as far as right now that I could sit down and I feel fairly comfortable with, definitely Bash. And just because I've been working with it a lot lately, both PHP and JavaScript, both of which are relatively new to me, but I've spent the last six months doing a lot of stuff with them. Or something, if you asked me, a uh, year and a half, two years ago, Python would have been on the list. And I still probably know Python very well, but I've used it very little over the last year and a half. So I'm probably not as good as it was when I, when I was using it regularly. And I think Python's great. I just, as far as local stuff on my machine, I mainly use Bash. It's always been that way. And then when it comes to web stuff, I just really like PHP uh, for server-side stuff, even though Python and Bash could be used as server-side scripts. So right now, JavaScript, PHP, and Bash are probably the ones I am most comfortable with. So I'll say those are the ones I know. Um, and then let's see. Someone asks uh, if I will be doing any Java programming tutorials. Um, I mean, that's always a possibility. About six months ago, I played with Java for about a month. Once again, I was trying, it's like I would learn something, the next day I would try to do that from memory and then add something new to it. And and I, I, I understand JavaScript enough now, or no, I'm sorry, Java enough now that uh, I could, I can definitely, looking at my notes, do it, but am I fluent with it? No, I don't think I'd be the best right now where I'm at teaching tutorials on it because I don't understand it well enough to explain it well. Um, if you are looking for Java tutorials, I'm going to say check out New Boston or The New Boston. He was uh, he does lots of tutorials and uh, a lot. He has, I think, like 200 tutorials on Java, and I went through most of them when I was learning. Main reason I was learning was not so much that I wanted to write stuff in Java, but I wanted to be able to understand Java better when I'm looking at uh, Android uh, programs, because Android is all Java based and pretty much everything for Android is written in Java. And I wanted to just have the knowledge to be able to understand it if I was looking at the code. Now, this isn't a direct question that someone asked, but when it comes to picking programming languages, obviously there's some better suited for other things, but uh, as far as, you know, which programming language is better, yes, some are more efficient, obviously, you know, C is going to be a great programming language as far as power because everything else is written in C. So if you can do it in the other languages, you can do it in C and you can probably do it more efficiently for what you're doing, but it's going to take probably a lot more work than just throwing something together in, in like Python. Um, but my, my rules when it comes to uh, picking a programming language um, is just that uh, you keep it open. And I'll give you an example. Even though, you know, you can use C, some people will use um, libraries that are proprietary and that limits them. Like if you use the Windows header file uh, library, um, you can make GUIs for Windows, but nothing, you know, no other operating system, at least not natively, where you could use C and uh, uh, something like GTK and then your program will run on Linux, Windows, and Mac. Um, or you can use uh, Qt, um, that's Qt, 
And from my understanding, I haven't played with the newest version, but I guess the newest version not only runs on Windows, Linux, Mac, but also you can compile stuff with it for uh, Android and iPhone. So, so definitely when you're picking a programming language, I wouldn't go with something like Visual Basic. Um, one, I mean, whether it's good or not for what it's used for, you write something in Visual Basic, you learn all this time learning Visual Basic, and you're limited to just Windows, where if you learn uh, uh, Python or Perl, um, you know, or C or C++, these are universal languages. Um, so don't limit yourself with that. Um, and uh, there was going to be one other thing I said, but I think that's, that's kind of it. You don't want to use, even if you're using an open language, don't use proprietary stuff within it to limit yourself, and then don't use proprietary languages like Visual Basic. Other than that, I've never done anything with Perl. Um, but, you know, if someone was to argue, like, Perl versus Python, I think it's kind of, for the most part, irrelevant, because if you know how to use it, uh, and it does what you need it to do, and it will run on pretty much any system, you're good to go. Even if, you know, C code might run slightly faster uh, than Python, uh, doesn't really matter if you're doing something small. Now, if you're doing large calculations, using something like C would, uh, could speed up, you could run something probably in a couple of minutes that might take something like uh, Bash or Python a uh, whole day to run. So that, but that's crunching big numbers. So basically when it comes to picking a language to learn, uh, look at what you're doing. I mean, even Bash uh, is, since it's open source, has been ported to Windows, either in Sigwin or uh, a standalone. You can, if you search Bash for Windows, you can get yourself a single executable file. Um, obviously, when we write a lot of Bash stuff for Linux, we're going to be using external tools like wget, maybe nmap, grep, which aren't built into Bash, but those are all uh, cross-platform too, so you can get wget for Windows. It's just kind of a pain because Windows doesn't supply that stuff for you. Um, so even when it comes to cross-operating cross system uh, co compatibility, even Bash is fairly compatible. Um, it just might take a little more extra work packaging. And that's when it comes to, to programming. You programming something that's, that will run on all operating systems is uh, fairly simple. It's just packaging it for the different operating systems uh, can be a little bit of a pain if you've never done it before. So uh, that's a little bit on, on programming languages that I know I use and suggestions for you. So once again, thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. Feel free to ask questions and comment below in this video uh, if the video is recent. Obviously, if this video is more than a couple of weeks old, I'm probably not going to get the comments from it. So uh, check out my newer videos for sure. But I thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.